Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I thought I'd tell you guys about keystone species and their impacts on their habitats and their environments. A keystone species is described as an animal that has a disproportionately large beneficial impact to its habitat and its environment around them. And then removing said animal from that habitat or environment would cause a detrimental impact on the habitat and environment, typically in a negative fashion. A great example of a keystone species is the gray wolf from the United States. And for this example, I'll be talking pretty much specifically Yellowstone National Park. So these wolves were hunted to near extinction, and with there being less wolves, there was more deer and elk as they were not being hunted by the wolves. With more deer and elk populations, they were eating a bunch of aspen saplings. And without now large groves of aspen trees, that was a lot of food and dam building resources for beavers. Now with those less resources and less food for the beavers, the beavers aren't there anymore. And when the beavers aren't there, they aren't building dams. And without the dams, they're not turning streams and small rivers into large ponds, which gives a lot of water and nu nutrients to a lot of the local wildlife and the plants. And it's kind of weird how it's all connected just from the disappearance of the wolves. But that's exactly why this wolf is a great example of a keystone species. The disappearance of that wolf caused the whole rest of this chain to be all messed up. In 1995, gray wolves were reintroduced back to Yellowstone National Park. The first year, they reintroduced 14 wolves that were captured up in Canada, and the second year, they reintroduced 17 wolves. Now, with the wolves back in Yellowstone National Park, they started to eat a lot more of the deer and the elk populations that grew so prevalent there. And these animals dying weren't the only benefit. A bunch of other animals like decomposers, magpies, a bunch of smaller mammals and rodents were taking advantage of all the leftover scraps, uh, furs, bones, everything like that. And bones are really great for rodents because they can gnaw on the bones for, and get their calcium and to trim up their teeth because rodents have ever-growing teeth uh, in the front. But we're not talking about rodents today, we're talking about how these wolves are benefiting the Yellowstone National Park. But once these deer and these elk populations started to decrease, then there became an increase in the aspen tree population. And with these aspen trees growing up and just becoming more prevalent, it brought back the beavers. The beavers themselves are also a keystone species. And now how these beavers are a keystone species is they create dams, which are actually incredibly important to the habitats around them. When they build these dams, they turn small streams or small rivers up into large ponds, which benefit all sorts of plants and trees that are up and around the pond and create a bunch more habitat for fish, frogs, turtles, other amphibians, uh, eagles, which are trying to eat the fish, ospreys, a bunch of other animals that are drawn to other animals or to the pond itself. So, by introducing one keystone species, we're bringing in another one, which benefits way more animals. Now let's talk about a couple of keystone species from our oceans. So first up is the sea otter, which was hunted to near extinction along the western coast of the United States and Alaska. These otters ate a lot of sea urchins, and once the otter populations kind of went away, the sea urchin population exploded, eating a lot of the kelp forests. And without the kelp forest being there, a bunch of the fish that relied on these forests for survival eventually disappeared and were becoming harder and harder to find. But these otters were reintroduced back to the western coast of the United States and with them the sea urchin population started to go back down, the kelp forest came back and thus a lot of the fish came back as well. Before I move on to the next keystone species I want to send out a huge thank you to the Oregon Zoo for providing sea otter video for us. This video will not be possible without them. I'm also using beaver, beaver footage sorry, that they sent us for our beaver video that we uploaded a while back. So again, a huge thank you to the Oregon Zoo for supporting my channel and for sending us plenty of awesome footage. But the next keystone species is the Antarctic krill. These krill only get about one to two centimeters long. And now you may be curious why an animal so small is considered a keystone species. But these krill are the main food item for a lot of animals. Like a lot of fish, penguins, seabirds, like all sorts of animals will eat these krill. And then larger animals like larger fish and penguins and seals and sea lions will eat those animals and then sharks and orcas will eat those animals. So this krill is considered a keystone species because they are the stepping stone, of, the first large stepping stone, sorry, of a much longer food chain where these animals are really needed. If you were to remove these krills from the Antarctic oceans, chances are a lot of these animals would starve or rapidly decrease in population because of the lack of a food source. Another great example of a keystone species is the world's largest land mammal, the African elephant. The African elephant is mainly a keystone species because of seed dispersal. As you can imagine, the world's largest land mammal eats a lot of plants. And these plants typically contain seeds of grasses, shrubs, and trees. 
And as these trees, not as the trees, as the elephants, sorry, but I'm pretty sure the trees don't water, but the, as the elephants wander around, they will spread out these seeds through their waist. So basically, elephant poop is spreading all of these plants' seeds and ensuring their survival. Now, these elephants also do another huge thing for the wildlife, is they create trails in the forest, similar to this. Although I'm in Florida and not Africa, this is the closest I could find to an example of what the elephants could do. I'm using a trail that something else made for my own transportation. And the elephants do that for other animals of the rainforests. As the elephants walk through forests and woods and things like that, other animals would use those paths for transportation to other food and water sources. And then as they break and bend over and push stuff out of the way, a lot of smaller animals, rodents, insects, reptiles, amphibians, stuff like that, will use all that damaged stuff that was pushed out of the way as a place to hide and have kind of their own little home thanks to the elephants. The last thing that the African elephant does for the animals in its habitat is when it poops, it not only spreads seeds around, but it provides food and homes for birds and many insect species. Now, as you guys know, I live down here in Florida and I didn't include probably one of the most iconic keystone species from the American Southeast and an animal that I like to call every tourist attraction's favorite thing from Florida and that is the American alligator. I call it that because at every single tourist attraction in Florida you see something alligator related. But I left them out of this video because I have an alligator video coming up really soon and I didn't want to uh, cover too much about alligators I'm going to cover in that video. And since we're down here in Florida, we love our alligators so there's going to be a lot to talk about about the American alligator. And we're definitely going to touch upon how this animal is a keystone species. But again, thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and as always, I will see you next week.